In this video, what I want to do is cover how to connect an ASI Air cameras guiding up to an AM5 mount from first principles, showing you the first person perspective so you can literally see where the cables plug in so there's no doubt if you're unsure. So the first thing you might have noticed is this power supply here, it's ZWO's 12 volt 5 amp regulated supply and we plug that into the 12 volt socket there using the 2.1 connector. So that's power connected up. Second thing we want to do is get the ASI air, packed it all away. So this is how the process will be if you just bought one. Now, it comes with a foot and some bolts to, M4 bolts to connect it all. And there's a shoe here. If we connected it like that, the, the 12 volt line out that goes from here to here will it won't fit properly so what we'll do is we'll use the the bolt the threaded bolt holes on the side m4 and quarter inch and we'll connect it that way and then the the power cable can come out there and it's got room to do so i'm praying that my gopro is pointing in the right place right that's cool so what we need now is a cable again another 2.1 to 2.1 going from the 12 volt line out to socket on the ASI air and deal with this cable management what I'll do is I'll just wrap it round a couple of times Hopefully there's not interference caused by wrapping it round, but it's going to look a bit more tidy. There we have it. So we've got power going into the mount, and because the M5, unlike the M3, has got a 12 volt line out, we've got that connected to power the ZBO SI Air Plus, or Mini, or Pro, whatever you have. Secondly, we need to get the Thirdly, we need to get the mount communicating with the SI Air. We do that via the USB A to USB B cable. And again, I'm just going to wrap it round and plug this into one of the USB 2 ports that's on the underside here. Now wrapping these cables around might cause some interference but I just don't see a, a way around it unless you just have really long cables dangling everywhere. Okay, what's next? Let's go for the main camera, that's my guide camera. Now, so I'm putting a M42 to 1.25 inch nose piece on so I can just push it in like an eyepiece. And I've got the a UVIR cut field from the front, which helps reduce those harsh IR wavelengths, which gives sharper images, less bloated stars, and a better color cast. It can look a bit pink without an IR filter. Okay, so with this camera, it's got a very small sensor, so it's only sampling the light from the center part of this lens, which is a lot flatter than the outside edges. So I don't need and it's quite a long tube, so it's sloping the light very gently. So I don't need a field flattener, which is why I can get away with having a push fit like you would a, an eyepiece. But if you've got a shorter tube and a bigger sensor, you'd need a, a field flattener on there, and then you'd need 55 mil backspacing. And you could do that by using, if you've got a cool ZW camera it includes the spaces required to do that um, but if not you'd need 37.5 mil of spacing to get the correct back focus from your your field flattener but with a small sensor it does uh, it limits you a little bit because you you can only image small areas of the sky because a small sensor on a long focal length equals a small field of view but the bonus is you don't have to worry about edge correction so much and um, gradient and vignetting where the image gets 
bright in the middle and dark towards the outside vignetting um, so it can make some things easier like I don't use flats or darks or anything I just process light frames because I'm lazy git so USB A again no, do I want to put the faster one no we'll use this one now I could plug this into let's plug this into the faster USB type 3 port there okay so we've got that going there now I want to set up guiding now I've got a standard Skywatcher straight through 50mm finder and I can convert this to a guide scope using this adapter which goes from that thread there to an M42 thread that's on this type of camera but you can also get a C mount version for mini cameras like the popular ASI 120 mini so I'll just unscrew the eyepiece Here we go, I'll plug, screw that onto there, and then that onto there. And then you don't need precise focus for guiding, but you can just screw that in and make adjustments to this front collar ring here to focus, and then lock that off until you're happy with focus. Now, my initial outing with this setup this week before Storm Bobbit hit us and we had four days of rains and flooding. Um, before that hit, I did quickly get out under the skies but didn't have the guiding set up. So I got some 30 second exposures, some planetary nebulae in the the, um, the wall in NGC 7000. Um, but they were just quick 30 second exposures. And the reason I didn't have guiding set up is because I, with the Takashi, you need to, to attach my finder guider I'd need an adapter to convert the Takashi spacing to a standard Jew and they're out of stock so um, I did actually buy this clamp and the idea was I was going to clamp this finder shoe on here put another rail on top and then clamp that on like that and put a, a guide scope on top or move that bar forward and have it slung underneath but then I, read, I was looking at these bolts here and I thought that spacing looks remarkably like the spacing for a finder shoe so I looked in the instructions and it was so <laughs> what I'm going to do is attach a finder shoe there and have my guide scope on the side so let's show you how we're going to set that up William Optics finder shoes are really good because they're slotted so they fit almost everything Quite short. Um. Hmm. Don't think they're going to hold. I think they're too short. Said to be right. What are you doing? They're way short. They're, you can't use those to put a finder shoe on. Okay, thankfully, rummaging around in the garage, I found some longer M4 bolts. They might be a bit too long, actually, but we'll see. I, mean, there's no, I don't think there's any wiring in there. There's no hub on here at all or anything. So I don't think there's any arm. We'll see how far these grow in. Just make sure it's safe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they'll be fine. Okay, I think we're in business now. I would have rather it be it's tempting to put the other way around so this slots down into it rather than up, but I'll just do it up tight. That should be okay. Got two screws to hold it, so it should be safe enough. Yay! So now we just need 
USB-A to another USB port and then we're all set. This one comes with a camera, I believe. Let's pop it in there. And then... Actually, I might go over the top so it doesn't get caught on any of these and pulled out or stretched. So we can go from there to the other USB 3. And I mustn't forget, I need to put in a memory memory stick into that last USB there. And I think that's it really. So yeah, um, obviously I'm just using an uncooled camera here, but if you've got a cooled camera, it would have a, a 2.1 socket. So you need another cable going from the cooler to one of these uh, ports. And if you've got a camera that doesn't have bulb mode, like a DSLR, one of the older DSLRs without bulb mode, then you'd need a trigger release cable going from your camera to this DSLR socket here. And that would be specific to your camera. So you'd have to like look that up, what that is. But uh, ZW are now supporting Sony cameras as well as Canon and Nikon, and of course ZWO. So, is branching out now but that's roughly how I've got it set up and I'll take you along for the journey when I get out and do some guided imaging. I hope that was useful that was the idea of this because I know I get asked about what cables go where sometimes on the help desk and uh, I think hopefully this will help if you can see where I put them by me strapping a GoPro to my head and hopefully that's looking where my eyes are when I edit this video. Um, I did kind of test it out and it looked okay. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you can see where I plugged everything. Please let me know if not, and I'll try and clarify things that weren't clear in the video. And I hope to see you on my journey, deep sky imaging with this rig and see what we can do with it. Also, just, as always, I'm just really appreciative of anyone who supports this channel. So big thank you to my Patreon and channel members and clear skies to everyone and tell those clouds to sod off. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.